Welcome everybody to a very special mega gadget collection. Yes, these are the videos or at this particular time broadcasts where I show you a whole host of gadgets and technology. And I think this is the first of what I would say is a, a larger mega gadget collection that I'm actually doing live for you. And it's an audio and action special all will become clear as I show you the technology off to the left hand side of me here. For those of you who have tuned in to the broadcast, thank you very, very much. I really do appreciate it. And if you've got any comments or questions, then please do leave them in the chat. If you want to use the super chat feature, then that will not only help support the Geek Noise channel, but it will also highlight and bring to your bring to my attention and to the rest of the people in the chat's attention uh, your question or comment so please do use that super chat if you want your comment highlighted so big hello to everyone who's tuned in for the live broadcast i know that from seeing some of the names in the chat that you join me every time and i really do truly appreciate that and i also know from the various names in the chat that you absolutely, or at least from the feedback you give me via the comments section, you really do like these mega gadget collections as well. Now I'm going to kick things off with a range of products from Beatron, and after I've covered the Beatron products, I will take some questions and obviously answer as many as I can, and then we'll move on to one really awesome item in this uh, gadget collection. It is very good value indeed, and if you're into your action uh, videography I think you will really like this one as well so let's start with the Beatron products the first thing is this pair of retro styled over ear headphones and when I show you these and when you check out the link down in the video description and see the actual price uh, that these come in for uh, I think you'll be very tempted because they are super comfortable here they are look at these very very comfortable these are definitely over the ear and they've got a really nice sort of band on the top so this is metal so we've got two metal bands and then this self-adjusting extendable band here and the cable is nice and generous in length it's a braided cable three and a half millimeter audio jack with this sort of Y splitter in the middle here so really nice quality cable but what's really nice about these, apart from the audio that we come on to in a short while, is they're very lightweight. Even though they're very big, they are super, super lightweight. And they've got so much padding. These have got some of the most generous amount of padding I've seen on a set of earphones. Now, they are very large, so these aren't ones you're going to take out and about with you. Uh, but for sitting down in the evening and listening to your audio... They are super, super comfortable. And I love this sort of self-adjusting band. I recently did a, a video covering some high-end headphones that had this self-adjustable sort of headband. And although there's not much padding here, uh, I think it's just a, a really nice way of doing things. It saves you having to adjust with a ratchet mechanism. Now, with regards to the audio quality on these, these aren't going to equal a high-end pair of headphones, but they come pretty darn close. They really do give a nice bass extension. The mid-tones are really smooth as well. The only sort of area that they're possibly lacking a little bit is in those higher frequencies. They just seem to miss off the very sort of highest frequencies in instruments. Not so much in vocals, but certainly some of the sort of maybe the snare drum uh, and some of the just the higher level instruments that you might hear in an audio track. It doesn't miss it completely, but it doesn't sort of give you that fulfilling sort of audio. But when you see the price, you'll be amazed. You'll be absolutely amazed. They look the part, and for the price, they sound absolutely amazing. So these are the Beatron uh, Retro Over-Ear Headphones. And as with all of the products I'm showing you in this broadcast, these are linked to down in the video description area. So let's move on, and we'll show you the second pair of earphones this time not headphones these are in-ear earphones again from Beatron this is what the product packaging looks like and these are their GLD 100 RMs and they come with an inline remote control and a microphone so you can use them on your smartphone there's also a little pouch inside and some different size silicon ear tips so they come with everything that you'd expect from a pair of earphones this is what they look like now these aren't braided cables 
uh, they have got a little bit of cable management so they've got this sort of Y splitter here three and a half millimeter audio jack and then this slides up and down so this gives you a little tiny bit of cable management to save them getting sort of tangled this is the little inline remote so there's your little in, inline remote control and there are buttons on the opposing side for things like volume etc and some track control push to talk as well and then the actual headphones themselves super lightweight they are metal they don't stick together like some wireless ones do they got sort of concentric circles on the actual uh, earphones themselves and they are very very comfortable and I think they're super comfortable due to their lightweight that's what sort of really adds to the comfort factor with these and again the price point that these come in at are amazing really really good and I'll let you into a little secret my son for a long long time uh, had Beatron earphones and when they broke after I think it was about two and a half three years and they'd been used a lot thrown in and out of school bags etc he said they were so good that he wanted another pair of Beatron uh, even though I offered to buy him a, a sort of higher end pair he wanted another pair of Beatron because they sounded good and these sound really nice nice and rounded sound to these uh, very natural vocals bass extension not quite so low as some but the actual vocal performance of these was very very good indeed now last but not least in the Beatron earphones that I'm going to show you today is this these are very very special indeed they come in this really nice presentation box uh, I've already obviously taken the earphones out you also get a little pouch in here again with some extra silicon ear tips uh, this is what the product packaging looks like up close for you they come in different colors as well this just happens to be the white and gold set which would go awesome with a gold colored iPhone or smartphone and these have got 9.2 millimeter drivers uh, 5 milliwatt output and the cable length is 1.2 meters now again these are linked to down in the video description so you can check them out for yourself and this is what they look like these are awesome so similar to the last uh, pair these have got like a three and a half millimeter audio jack on this end and a nice sort of knurled design on here and at the Y splitter this has also got a nice sort of knurled part part to it so it's really nicely finished this is metal again we've got some cable management with this piece that pulls down we've also got the inline uh, remote control and microphone with buttons on one side and then the microphone on the opposing side and then the actual earphones themselves again metal but they've got this really nice sort of polished metal back to them clear silicon ear tips or, or not completely clear translucent ear tips on these and super lightweight again but really nice finish to them very very nicely finished I think they look superb and with regards to the audio quality on these compared to the last pair of earphones I showed you these have got a deeper bass extension so much better bass frequency response mid tones again sound really natural similar characteristics to these ones I showed you a moment ago uh, but certainly a lower bass frequency response and then also the higher frequencies in these sound really good and again for the price not only are you getting something that looks superb I love the gold and white colorway on these but you're also getting something that is really very very affordable and has that inline remote control with the microphone and I think that Beatron just do a fantastic job with their earphones and headphones so you can find links to all of those down in the video description before we move on we're going to take a look at the rest of the tech here and I've got three more really exciting products is it three yeah I think it's three so stay with me we we'll take a look inside the chat see what questions we got and then we we'll come back to covering the rest of the technology so a big hello to the unexpected Russ B Ronnie Lowe uh, Yui Klinkmuller Sumyu Paul and four tech for geeks nice of you to all tune in for the live broadcast uh, for Tech for Geeks asks, hi Dave, how are you? I am absolutely fine. I hope you are fine too. Everything's going swimmingly well. And although the weather's cold, I've been working hard and thoroughly enjoying it. We've also got a question here from The Unexpected. Would the Beatron headphones be any good for studio purposes? As in my spare time, I edit video and audio. These aren't uh, sort of monitors. They're not headphone monitors. 
if you were looking for something to get really accurate audio uh, for video editing, then I would recommend something like the Audio Technica ATH50 M50X, I think it is. I can't remember the exact model number. I think it's the M50s. Uh, something like that, which is really designed to be an audio monitor and not colorize the audio. Uh, that's not to say that the Beatron headphones don't sound good. They do, but they're more for your general uh, music listening. Uh, if you want really accurate sound, you want something that doesn't add any characteristics to the sound at all. And the Audio Technica, I'm sure it's the ATH M50s, really are good. Um, or any of any of the particular range uh, that Audio Technica make that are marked as studio monitors. That's what I would definitely suggest. So let's move on. There's no more questions or super chats. So let's have a look at this product here. This is an empty box. I'm just showing you the box so you know what to look out for. So this is another product. Uh, again, it was sent to me by Beatron, but the actual uh, brand name on this is Crutes, and this is their KRT20, and it's a Bluetooth speaker. This is what it looks like. It's very cool. Now, I'll tell you what it looks similar to. Oh, it's plugged in. Just over the back here, I've got my Google Home Mini. Um, I almost yanked the cable out then, but it looks very similar to a, a Google Home Mini, but a bit larger. So we've got this rubberized base and this rubber ring on the bottom, which stops it slipping around on your desk. And then we've got this sort of cloth material on top, little sort of loop on the back here, which you could use to hang it up somewhere. And then we've got some controls across the front. Let me give you a closer look at this. So we've got these controls at the front, and that's things like audio, volume, etc., uh, and play and pause, of course and this is just extremely good at playing back audio wirelessly nice and compact really easy to charge if i just open this up you will see that we have got three and a half millimeter audio jack for if you want to hardwire something in also micro usb for charging the internal battery and there's also a little memory card slot so you can play audio back direct from a memory card also on the side we have got a little tiny microphone. So you can use this like you can with a lot of Bluetooth speakers. You can actually pause your music if something comes in on your phone, phone call for example, and you wanna take that call, you take the call, and then after you've taken the call, the music will start playing again. Very, very cool. Now it doesn't go super loud, not as loud as some of these larger speakers you're gonna get, but the audio is very clear. And I would say if you're looking at something like up to about a 16 by 20 foot room for example so a medium sized room it's perfectly loud enough to entertain a group of people in a room that size for parties you'd probably want something a little bit louder something a little bit beefier but this is nice and portable on the side of your bedside cabinet something nice and discreet in your lounge or dining room that you don't want sort of a really large speaker in there then this is a really good choice so that's the Crutes KRT20 we will move on to a couple more products in a short while. Let's take another look inside the chat. Uh, Andrew Purcell says, free sample before I buy. Depends what you're referring to, but I've got no free samples in this particular broadcast. Uh, Ronilo Jasserino says, what do you say about the Mi Max 2? I've seen a lot of reviews on this and I'd really love to cover it on the channel. Uh, so if Mi Max are watching, or the manufacturers I should say, it's not Mi Max, it's Xiaomi that make that one, I'm not sure. But if the manufacturers are watching, then I'd definitely like to take a look at that. Uh, Darren Gator, Dave, you got the model number correct on the Audio Technicas. Awesome. They're just one of my favourite pair of headphones of all time. They, they offer great value for money, they've come down in price since I originally covered them. And uh, they just are really good for natural sounding. Uh, as you would expect it, audio, and they're just ideal for video editing. They are really very, very good indeed. So I'm going to save this action camera until last. In a broadcast about a week or so ago, I covered some products from Pison. Uh, this is the product packaging on this one. This is the Color Power Pro, and this is one of those battery packs. Uh, 10,000 milliamp hours, I think, on this one, if memory serves me right. Yep, 10,000 milli uh, milliamp hours, uh, 38.5 watt hours typical. And it's also got uh, outputs of 5 volt, 1.5 amp, and 2.4 amp. Uh, smart as well. So it's got smart technology built into it. And what I mean by smart 
is that if your device that you're plugging into this draws a lower current it will give it the lower current if it draws up to 2.4 amps and it's capable of charging a bit faster then this will deliver that um, extra beefy output for faster charging what I like about this one and I showed you one of the Pison battery packs in a previous broadcast is that instead of having little LEDs to give the battery meter this has got a display built in which I'll show you in a short while I also like the fact that it's a nice metal casing down the bottom the only plastic bit is where the display is and the connections so it feels really nice in the hand nice curved edges to this one as well a really nice sort of compact uh, battery pack as you can see there from the size of my hand it's about the size of or it's a little bit bigger than the Sony Xperia XZ1 compact that I'm testing at the moment to give you an idea of size and on the front edge here or the top edge you've got the micro USB input for charging and two USB outputs for charging your device and we've also got the power button on the side and when we push the power button just push this and it will actually give you just here this displays the percentage left so we're at 80% left so 80% capacity left on this battery pack and I just love the fact that this has actually got a physical display much better than little LED lights although LED lights are fine I like a more accurate display as to what percentage I've got left now 10,000 milliamp hours might not sound as good as some of these big battery packs that give you 26,800 I think the maximum one I've tested is uh, but this is a lot lighter a lot more slimline a lot more portable and 10,000 milliamp hours is enough to charge a regular smartphone probably about three times from zero to a hundred percent so for a day trip weekend away where you just want some portable power this is a really very good choice so before I move on to the last item I will just remind you that there are links to all of these products where you can pick them up for yourself and also to the manufacturers website down in the video description area so please do check that out so next I'm going to cover a product which you see a lot of these you I'm gonna say it right off the bat you do see a lot of these on the likes of Amazon and many of them don't perform that great the choices you've got nowadays for action cameras you've got things like the TomTom Tom Bandit you've got the Garmin Verb range and then you've also got the GoPro Hero range I happen to have a GoPro Hero here one that I kept hold of because it performs really well this is the original Hero session tiny little camera 1080p video footage nice and easy to use um, and the GoPro Hero range of uh, like the black models are really expensive and not everyone can afford to spend that sort of money on an action camera this one is a really good choice I'm going to show you the box first of all this is from a company called Hamswan this is what the box looks like give you a close-up look at that so this will actually record uh, in up to 4k 170 degree wide angle lens also does loop recording uh, does 1080p as well as 4k super waterproof uh, h.264 uh, format for the video it also does time-lapse photography as well this is the box this is full of accessories I'm going to show you some of the accessories before I show you the camera so it comes with the typical waterproof housing this has got like a seal around it as well it's got a nice lens cover uh, and it's also got buttons that you can push through the little case it's also compatible with GoPro mounts so if you want to get additional mounts then you can get them and this just means that the camera is waterproof of course you don't need to use it inside that particular case now we've also got a box here of accessories are you ready for this we have got this style mount very familiar looking we have also got various uh, brackets we have got a larger clip style mount as well so you could mount this onto a bag strap onto a cap for example we've also got a, another mount here 90 degree mount we have also got a bicycle mount now as I go on all I want to say at this point is when you used to buy a GoPro Hero camera especially the black version I think with the silver versions as well when you used to buy them years and years ago you used to get so many mounts and then GoPro stopped doing that now they just give you the bare minimum 
and then you have to pay extra for the mounts. Are you ready for this? So I've shown you some mounts already. We also get, these are the self-adhesive mounts. I'm not gonna take them out. You get a curved mount and a flat mount in there. So you can put that on your dashboard, for example. Not finished yet. You also get this uh, sort of angled mount. This is to give some height to the camera off of your dashboard. You also get a frame. Let me show you this one. So with a GoPro, you have to choose waterproof frame or non-waterproof, or, or waterproof case or, or the frame. This is like a frame that you can put your camera in. Now, if you buy a GoPro camera, you have to choose the frame. And then if you want to put it on a tripod, you then have to buy the tripod adapter. This has got the tripod threaded mount on both sides. So you can mount it in either orientation. And then you can also add an accessory on top. Maybe you want to put a little LED light on top. How cool is that? In addition to that, you also get another threaded mount here, which you can use, and you also get a tripod adapter as well. So the one, so this alone with GoPro, I think you have to pay nine ninety five for this one, and then this one third party would be like two or three pound. Let me give you a closer look at these. So just these alone, just that alone from GoPro, the official GoPro one, you'll probably pay between seven and ten pounds for the official GoPro one. You're also getting this one thrown in for free as well. So you've got all of these mounts included with the camera. I think that is fantastic. And then moving on to the camera itself, this is what the camera looks like. Let me give you a close up of this. So this is a 4K action camera. Just look at that, absolutely awesome. 4K, let me just try and focus on that. Look at that, very, very good indeed. Now, not only have you got a 4K action camera here, you've also got controls on this side. You've also got the uh, micro USB connector there and the memory card. Across the top here, you've got the uh, sort of menu button and OK button. You've also got power button on the front. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you've got the battery compartment in the bottom, which isn't as nice to open, admittedly, as a GoPro. Ah, I can't get it open with my... I've just trimmed my fingernails, but you have got, I can't get that open. Trust me, you've got the battery compartment on the bottom. I don't want to break, oh, there we go. It just needed a little bit more time. So a little battery compartment, the battery's already in there. So that's a little bit trickier to open than if you had a GoPro, admittedly. But in addition to that, you've also got a screen already on the back. Now I know some of the GoPro models come with a screen in the back, but not all of them. Some of them you had to buy the screen extra. This comes with a screen already in the back. This doesn't come with a screen. This does 1080p video. The newest uh, Hero Session doesn't come with a screen. So the fact that this does 4K is amazing. The fact that you get all of these accessories is also amazing. And the quality that it produces is also very, very good indeed. I don't think, if I'm telling you the truth, I don't think it's up to GoPro quality, but it's very, very near. And when you check out the link down in the video description, you'll see the current price of this on Amazon and you will be amazed. You will be amazed. Let me just say, I'm not gonna tell you the exact amount, but it's way under a hundred pounds in the UK. That is really very, very good. So that's the Ham Swan action camera, the F68. Let's pop back to the questions and see if we've got any questions come in. The Unexpected says, can the Bluetooth speaker shown be paired to work in conjunction with another Bluetooth speaker to give a fuller sound? No, this one can't. This one works by itself. You can't make it into a stereo pair. <clears throat> Darren Gator says, 10,000 milliamp hours is great for taking out of the home. Anything higher is great for in the home or office, unless you go camping, hiking, etc. Very, very true. Uh, the Aylesbury Cyclist, what do you think of the new Sony RX0 action camera? I think it looks really interesting. Uh, I've seen it in action and I think it produces gorgeous quality video. I think the only thing that they possibly missed in that, which would have made it even more appealing to me, would have been internal 4K recording. So it does internal 1080p up to 60 frames per second. But if you want 4K recording, you have to do that externally. And then you're making the tiny little camera bigger with the external recorder. 
uh, S Baggins, can you use the action camera as a dashboard camera or is that overkill? This particular one, not all action cameras do this, but this particular one does offer loop recording. So you can use it as a dash cam as well. You need that loop recording so that when it gets to the end of the memory card capacity, you don't have to remember and then go in and format the card and start it recording again. This will just loop and start back at the beginning. So this particular one can. If you're looking for an action camera that can do a dash cam feature, then look for something that says it does loop recording. Uh, David Hepworth, can you give us an update on the iPhone 10 after nearly a week? Still, it is a very good smartphone. This is probably the last time I'm going to mention the iPhone 10. I know that I think you, David, were looking for a full review. My, my initial video really says it all. My opinion hasn't changed. The rear-facing camera on it, and I mentioned the camera first because that's one of the main things I look for in a smartphone, apart from a good overall experience, of course which the iPhone 10 doesn't deliver for me. It might do for you, but it doesn't for me. The rear facing camera works brilliantly. The front facing camera, I would say is only acceptable. It's not a stellar performance. Uh, the, um, the screen is a nice screen, apart from the notch, which I couldn't look past. Some people can, I couldn't look past it. I think that the uh, actual color rendition in the screen is okay as long as you're not looking at it off axis otherwise you get this cool blue tint and that carries through to if you're looking back at photos or videos that you've recorded or captured uh, the battery life i would say was just average it's no better in fact i think that the iphone 8 plus battery performance was a little bit better than the iphone 10. the actual quality like the build of the hardware is very good indeed uh, but the actual um, uh, overall experience delivered by iOS 11 uh, is still not good. I'm, I'm still not satisfied. iOS 11, even if it's in its latest version, is not good at all. So that's sort of my one week review of the iPhone 10. A big, big thank you must go out to Front Page Tech. John, you are a stellar guy. Thank you very much for your support. John says, love you, Dave. Same back at you, John. Uh, John from Front, Front Page Tech, one of my favourite channels to watch. I was mentioning this to one of my relatives the other day because we were just talking about who do you watch on YouTube. Um, and I don't watch many tech sort of channels. I really don't because, uh, and, and no disrespect to anyone at all, but they cover the same sort of product. We normally get the product uh, videos all released in one day. The videos sort of cover the same sort of thing. And I like something that's more opinion based. Let me put it that way. And John uh, actually gives us the latest news, but with John's take on it. And it's just so, so entertaining. And it's nice to find a somebody who's very unique uh, in the way that they cover the latest tech news. And there's probably John and about I can count them on one hand probably, about four or five people that I don't miss their videos. Um, and that says something about the content. So a big, big thank you to John. We've also got here uh, the unexpected. What is the maximum size micro SD capacity for the 4K action camera? Don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure when I checked it, that will accept up to 128 gigabyte micro SD card. Um, I wouldn't put more than a 64 gigabyte card in a, an action camera anyway, just in case you lost the camera or it got damaged. Uh, Darren Gator obviously checked the link in the video description to the Ham Swan action camera and says, wow, that is a low price for the 4K action camera. It certainly is, and it does perform very well indeed. Have we got any more questions? We've also got a comment from Do or Do Not. There is no try. Bluetooth 5 is going to take more speaker, make more speaker available that can pair more than one without special apps. Yes, Bluetooth 5 is the future. Uh, Darren Gator, I was going to get the Hero Session, but I think I'll stick with my Polaroid Cube, which is a really good action camera, uh, or Cube Plus, which is also very good. They're pretty good video quality and a lot, lot cheaper. Yes, they are, and I think they're the same sort of uh, physical format and shape as the little GoPro Hero Session, which I love. I mentioned this in a previous broadcast. The reason I love this one 
is when I get in the car, I haven't even got to mount it. What I do is I lift up the headrest, put it under the headrest and then jam it in place. And it stays sandwiched like that and just captures a viewpoint with me driving. That's what I use that mainly for. Don't use any mounts with it at all. Uh, David Hepworth says, I will check John out after this broadcast. Definitely do. Definitely check out Front Page Tech. And Ronilo confirming that, yes, the Mi Max 2 is made by Xiaomi. Assuming that's how you pronounce it. So, really good questions in this broadcast. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. Before I finish off, I will just let you know that I've got some really good live broadcasts scheduled for next week. Um, I'm hopefully taking a look a really good uh, software-based security package that works not only on your desktop but also on your mobile devices and tablets as well so do stay tuned for that I've also got my review of the Sony Xperia XZ1 compact courtesy of Vodafone I'm going to be giving you my opinion of this really compact but nice performer of a smartphone in next week's videos and coming up in two days time so at the weekend I've also got a really cool gaming mouse from Logitech that's going to be coming up in future broadcast as well uh, Tech Lost Reviews comes in with a chat saying first time actually catching a live stream awesome welcome welcome really nice of you to tune in I really do appreciate it I'm really enjoy enjoying doing the live streams purely because we get this interaction going. I say this pretty much in every live broadcast, but it's uh, really nice of you to all chime in with your comments and questions. Uh, something else to cover off as well that I actually got asked in a tweet earlier today. Somebody was asking me how I was getting on with the iPhone 10 and what potential phones I'm looking at next. And um, I explained to that particular person that you know I wasn't overly uh, enamoured by the iPhone 10. I won't be keeping it as a daily driver as I expected. Um, it will be moving on to its new owner very very shortly. Uh, but the next phone I actually hope to get in is probably going to be the HTC U11 Plus. That's the most likely contender to become my next daily driver. I've, I've reached out to HTC and to Razer for a Razer phone. I uh, haven't heard back from either of them yet. Uh, also to Huawei on the Mate 10 Pro. So if any of you are listening and you can hook me up, then please do. I just want to share my experience. And if the smartphones live up to their expectations, that's really good for everyone involved. And um, I, my, my priority has sort of changed over the years. Many, many years back, it used to all be about the hardware. I used to just love the Apple iPhone. You know, I've had every iteration of the iPhone from the very first gen. But then as the software became more sloppy in iOS, I sort of began falling out of love. And when I was chatting to this person this morning, I think they hit the nail on the head. And that's that you become bored of seeing the same thing over and over again. If it was very innovative or they were adding new features and they worked extremely well without all of this sort of errors in the operating system and without the issues that I face, then you sort of forgive them. You know, it doesn't have to be a revolutionary device each time, but it has to really deliver on what you want. And my priority now has changed to user experience and camera performance. That's really very, very important to me. Uh, less so as to how it looks. I don't mind bezels on my phones, for example, as long as it performs well. So hopefully I'll be covering those products very, very soon. I'm going to definitely be guessing the HTC U11 Plus in whether I get sent a loaner or not. I'm going to invest in one of those as a potential daily driver, so do stay around for that. Plenty of you asking for that as well. Um, Darren Gator also says, are you going to be like Dave Cullen and get just a dumb phone? I had considered doing that, and I do have a dumb phone already. I have a Nokia, I think it's like a 2300, or I can't remember the model number. It's just an old Nokia phone. And when I want to escape from all of this sort of... Uh, social media, YouTube, etc. I want to escape for a day. Sometimes I just leave my normal phone in my pocket and carry my... Uh, I put it on silent and just carry the Nokia around. And if my immediate members of the family want to contact me, they can contact me on my other number. So so it's not something I'm going to do full-time. It is something I do from time to time, though. Uh, Raymond Moore asks, is action camera superior to today's smartphone in terms of 4K video quality? Sometimes it's pretty evenly matched. 
the action camera is just more rugged, I think. You haven't got to worry about that screen breaking if you drop it. Uh, but I think that smartphones, when done right, so a good smartphone, often outperforms the video quality and the audio quality from an action camera. Action cameras aren't good with audio quality, unless you put an external mic in, but then you lose the sort of ruggedness and the waterproofness of them. So, yeah, they're pretty evenly matched, but I do think that the smartphone excels in terms of quality. Uh, Paul Sergidis says, thinking of buying the HTC U11, so looking forward to your review. Uh, and Ranilo Jasonero Razer Phone, please do a detailed review. Well, if you want me to cover the Razer Phone, you need to tweet the CEO of Razer and ask them very politely to hook at Geekanoids up on Twitter with the Razer Phone. Let's try and make that happen. Uh, do not do, or do or do not, there is no try, says, isn't Nokia like Blackberry? in the grave waiting for the dirt to be tossed in. No, I don't think so. And BlackBerry have just launched a new smartphone, the BlackBerry Motion, which looks very promising. Very good security on BlackBerry smartphones as well, and I'm pleased that they're still sticking around. And Nokia have just released a range of Android smartphones that have all been very well received. So I do think that Nokia are here to stay as well. And also Nokia purchased Withings and now carry their range of health-related products, smart scales and, and, and other things, and uh, fitness watches as well. So they'll definitely be around for quite a few years to come. So anyway, that is it for this Mega Gadget Collection. Thank you again to all of you who've tuned in. Have a fantastic day or evening, wherever you are, and I'll see you all again soon in another video on the Geek Noise channel.